Hi everyone, my name is George Genkov and I'm an amateur astrophotographer and in this video I'm going to review my new auto guiding setup from SV Boni. Guiding helps us a lot in deep sky photography where we take long exposure pictures and this video might be helpful for those who are just getting into auto guiding or looking for a different auto guiding setup. The company Svoboni reached me out and asked to review their auto guiding setup. They sent me a mini guide scope and a camera to see how it works, cover it pros and cons, and use it to take pictures of deep sky objects in the future if I want to. Interesting fact, I had actually bought exactly the same mini guide scope in June before the message from Svoboni, and I've used this uh, mini guide scope for more than a month already with a different camera from ZWO. And a couple of weeks ago, I got uh, this auto guiding setup. It is a mini guide scope SV165 and a guide camera from SV Bonnie as well, uh, SV305. In general, we use auto guiding to improve the tracking accuracy of a mount. Even an expensive and heavy mount is not ideal and it has tracking errors. If we take a long exposure picture through a telescope without auto guiding, we might see that our stars don't look sharp and have trail form. Of course, some exposures might look good, it also depends on the focal length of a telescope using polar alignment accuracy, balancing and different factors. Anyhow, there is the higher chance to ruin your picture without auto guiding than using it. Auto guiding setup represents a guide scope with short focal length and the camera that you place together with your imaging telescope. The idea of guiding is pretty simple. A guide scope must be pointed to the same area of the night sky as your imaging telescope. And on PC there is special software called PHD2 that we use for guiding. So in this app we pick a star we want to guide on and then PHD2 starts tracking movements of the star and send pulses to the mount to keep the star at the same spot. As a result we can take long exposure pictures and get Nice results with sharp stars. Now let's look at our guiding setup from SV Boni a little closer. So we got a mini guide scope SV165. It is a 30 mm refractor with a 120 mm focal length. And F ratio on this telescope is F4, which is pretty good and fast. Uh, in the box, you'll find uh, this guide scope, a mounting bracket that comes with the rings, and one Allen key in case. Uh, you want to take the rings off and on the guide scope there is m42 thread so you can fit any guide camera with m42 interface if you have a guide camera with inch and quarter interface you can just install it inside the mini guide scope as i did with my sv boni sv305 uh, inside the guide scope you'll find compression rings and uh, i really like this feature in that case uh, using compression rings you're not gonna make any scratches on your guide camera this guide scope doesn't have a focuser and it's common sense, but it has a helical focus stroke. And if you want to focus this mini guide scope, all you need to do is unscrew this red ring and then start unscrewing this black part. So you need to unscrew this ring, sorry for the noise if you hear any. And then if you unscrew this part, you see that this part just comes out like this. And once you find the focus, all you need to do is just uh, lock this red ring again and that's how you focus this guide scope. Let's look at the guide camera now. So SV Boni sent me the model called SV305. It is a color camera that was dedicated for playing raster photography and guiding. Uh, it has a good and really sensitive IMX290 sensor and by the way exact same sensor is used in CWO290 MC or MM camera. Uh, this SV305 has 128 megabyte DDR buffer, which is helpful and allows you to avoid uh, frames losing when you're capturing. So the camera has just one USB output port and it is USB Type-B with a 2.0 interface. And I was a little surprised to seeing this slow interface in a planetary camera, because when we capture planets, we want our camera to capture as many frames per second as possible. and uh, 2.0 interface is a bottleneck of this camera if you use it for planetary imaging. On the other hand, if you use this camera for guiding purposes only, USB 2.0 will not be a problem for you. And yes, you will not find a ST4 guide port that you would normally find in an indifferent guide camera. And it has just one USB port. And I think uh, Mr. Dino from Dino Donald's YouTube channel would like this. If you've seen his video tutorial about the PhD2 app, you know what he did with his guide cable. What 
you should do is grab the cable, pour some explosives on it, and destroy it. <laughs> In the packaging box for the camera, you'll find the camera itself, two extension rings, instruction, cleaning cloth, USB cord, and CD disk with drivers in case you don't have the internet but have a CD reader. So looking at the USB cord that comes with this camera, I have just one question. Why? So while the length of this telescope is good and fits all the needs that you might need for plane raster photography or for guiding, uh, this USB cord has two USB inputs. I'm assuming the first one is for data transferring and the second one is for additional power that this cord requires. In 2022 it looks a bit weird, plus some amateur astrophotographers might not have this USB port on their rigs, so... I mean... I... Anyway, I already got a different cable that I ordered on Amazon just for $7. And in my rig, I use a six inch uh, USB cable. It works really great. I've never had any issues with it. And uh, I've tested uh, this camera with uh, different USB ports, just in case. Uh, all of them work great. So as a result, there is nothing wrong with the camera, but low quality cord that comes in the package. And once again, you can spend extra few dollars and get a cord uh, with the specific length that you need for your setup. It is Monday night of August 8th and I'm setting up my rig for some deep sky photography. As a reminder, I use a 6-inch neutron reflector telescope, Skywatcher 150 PDS. My imaging camera is ZWO 2600MC Pro and everything is mounted on Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Let's look at PhD2 software and what you need to do to get out of guiding up and running. So basically after you connect your camera to the computer and install all the drivers, uh, you want to create a new profile in PhD2 and it's better to use wizard option for this one. Let's click the button called connect equipment. We go to manage profiles, uh, new using wizard. And now we gotta pick the guide camera which is SV305. Let's hit this camera and uh, it's asking us whether the camera is connected or not. Uh, the camera is connected right now, so we hit yes. And as you can see, it already uh, typed in the pixel size of the camera, which is a good sign. That means that the PhD2 already sees the camera. And uh, now we gotta type in the guide scope focal length, which is 120 millimeter in our case. Now we gotta hit next. And now we need to set up the mount. So I use EQ6R Pro mount and I use this driver. I also answer yes on the question about uh, whether the mount is connected or not. Let's hit next again, hit proceed. Uh, we gotta set up the profile name. Uh, what I usually do, I just um, type in the uh, names of the guide scope camera and the mount that I use, so that in case if I change the mount and change anything, I uh, pick the correct profile in the future. So I gotta go and do EQ6. Uh, and also there is the mark uh, build dark library, we want to do that, so hit finish. So my target for tonight is a plane tour nebula called NGC 7293, also known as Helix Nebula. It lies in about 650 light years from us in constellation Aquarius and uh, I'll be using the ZWO duo band pass filter since the moon is out and will be in the full phase in a couple of days. Alright, so the telescope just centered the Helix Nebula in the camera field of view and let's get back to PhD2. So as we can see everything, uh, the camera and the mount is connected to PhD2 and uh, now we gotta hit this uh, kind of loop uh, button. Camera just started taking uh, loop exposures. And uh, right now you're looking at the uh, pictures that SV305 camera is taking through SV165 guide scope. So it's taking one second exposures and uh, we can see a couple of stars in the camera field of view. Okay, so PhD2 is running now and as you can see the total uh, error right now is uh, 0 0.92, 0 0.89 and ideally you want to have your total error mass around uh, 1 but uh, don't get crazy about it because uh, your graph might be going up and down, up and down and uh, there are different factors that can affect guiding like 
uh, balancing like polar alignment, even the wind that I have tonight. But the most important thing is the image that you're getting. And I'm about to look at my first exposure. Now you look at the single exposure of the Helix Nebula that I captured a couple minutes ago. It is a 4 minute exposure captured under really light polluted sky because I have 87% illuminated moon tonight. So let's zoom the image in a bit and look at the stars. And as you can see, all the stars, they look really nice and sharp at different places of the camera field of view. And so far I'm pretty happy with the results that I'm getting and I'm looking forward to seeing what the final image will look like. Okay, so what about pricing? Now, that's the part a lot of you guys may find attractive. So you can find the guide scope together with the camera for about 200 American dollars. Sometimes you can find special offers and get a really good deal. And if you want to purchase a guide scope and camera separately, you'll find a SV-165 for about 50 or 55 dollars. Uh, although I was happy to get this one for 45 dollars on Amazon and a SV-305 camera would cost you something around $150, which is also good. In terms of a guide scope, I personally think that you get a great deal. For example, uh, the closest competitor to 165 would be a mini guide scope from ZWO that costs twice more. I personally have never used uh, the mini guide scope from ZWO, so I cannot give you an objective opinion which one is better, the one from ZWO or the one from SV Bonnie. But I found um, the YouTube channel called uh, the Narrowband channel, I think, where Mr. Benjamin compares uh, these two mini guide scopes, the one from SV Bonnie SV165 and the second one from ZWO. And in this video he says that uh, these two mini guide scopes, they perform really close to each other, so I think there is no need to pay twice more for the guide scope from ZWO when you can get basically the same guide scope from SV Bonnie for $50. And yep, this mini guide scope has a couple of cons. So the first one, you cannot adjust the orientation of the guide scope in the rings and align the field of view of mini guide scope with the field of view of your imaging telescope. For better guiding results, uh, you really want to guide on the same star that your imaging telescope sees. Uh, on the other hand, Considering the fact that the focal length of this mini guide scope is 120 mm, uh, most likely this guide scope will see the same stars that your imaging telescope sees, at least partially. And that's actually the case for my imaging setup. So as a reminder, the focal length of my imaging telescope is 750 mm, and the uh, guide scope, like the right side of the guide scope field of view sees exactly the same stars as my imaging telescope does. And if you use a telescope with shorter focal length together with the SV-165, I think these two telescopes would look at the same area of the night sky for sure. So the second con that I found in this guide scope is that this one doesn't have a blend that will protect the lens from dew. Uh, the only thing uh, I found a solution in my case, I use a dew heater and I've never faced any issues with dew. In terms of a camera for the price, you get a really sensitive IMX290 sensor that will see many stars you can guide on. Uh, a camera from ZWO with the same sensor would cost more, so you're also saving money on this part, buying uh, SV-305. The only concern I have with this camera is that it is a color camera. Ideally, you wanna use a monochrome camera for guiding because uh, monochrome cameras have better sensitivity than their color versions. However, in most of the cases, uh, SV-305 would work great and you'll find at least one star to guide on in different areas of the night sky. Overall, you get a great auto guiding setup for the price. You can use it with any imaging telescope that has a focal length of 750mm or lower. Uh, to be honest, I think that combination of this auto guiding setup and 750mm focal length telescope is about its limits. And you might want to use a bigger guide scope already, but for me, this one works just great and I can get really nice pictures of the night sky that I'm happy with. I want to say thank you to SV Bonnie Company for providing me with this nice setup for review. It was my first experience reviewing the product that was sent to me directly by the manufacturer. And I'm looking forward to reviewing any different gear that is dedicated to astrophotography. I hope this video review was helpful to you guys and you can decide whether this auto guiding setup works for you or not. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. And at the end of this video, I have a final picture of Helix Nebula I captured using this auto guiding setup from SV Bonnie. I hope to see you in future videos and until then, clear skies.